Today's video is all about pressure testing my castings. Now you've seen me do it before, I did it with a cast iron one, but this is another one. So to make this video a bit more interesting, I've decided to make a silicon bronze cylinder and an aluminium cylinder. And we'll compare and we'll see just which one will fail first. So when I do the actual test, I'll be using both cast iron covers for the aluminium cylinder, for the silicon bronze cylinder and for the cast iron. Now it took a quite a long time to actually tap and drill all the holes for that. So if I made separate covers in the respective metals there, like aluminium or silicon bronze, it just was going to take too long. So what I'm looking for is just the cylinder itself to see if they'll fail. I'm hoping that the cast iron cylinder covers will last through all the tests. So I bet you you're wondering why the fire extinguisher cylinder is there in the video. Well, there's a very good reason. You should notice it's got a hemispherical end, but this end is flat. Now I'll explain the reasons why. When you have a hemispherical cylinder, the pressure is pushing when it's pressurised in all those different directions. But this one here, it's flat. It's pushing just that way. It's giving a lot of pressure on there. So what happens is, this has to be a lot thicker. If it's the same thickness as the wall, it will balloon out. So the same goes for the covers here. You'll notice it's not clear on this one, but underneath you'll see there's a hemispherical shape. That's so the pressure is even all over. Now if I made this perfectly flat, it would need to be very thick. But the problem is, the screws that actually hold it on there, it's going to be a lot of pressure on them to push them out of the threads or to actually stretch the bolt. So that's why I use the hemispherical chamber on there. It just makes things a lot easier and you don't have to put the excess pressure where you don't need it. So here is another interesting point about pressure testing castings. They do stretch. The higher the pressure, the more they'll stretch. And I'll demonstrate that with this brand new piston ring. Now you'll see that stretches. Now that because it's very thin and it's not connecting the end there, it's stretching a lot more than it would. But when you pressurise a casting, it will go out like that, and it will fail. That's probably not the only place it'll fail. Those threads is another weak point as well. But you wouldn't believe that cast iron stretches so much, and most people don't realise that piston rings are made out of cast iron. So I'll demonstrate that it is cast iron. See, broken two pieces there. It is cast iron. Everything has been assembled for the first test. As you can see on the right hand side, there's the gauge originally used, which went up to 200 bar or 3000 psi. Well, the new gauge goes up to 600 bar, which is just under 9000 psi. So I think it'd be plenty enough for this test. Now there seems to be a widespread belief amongst metal casters on YouTube that you need Petrobond to give a nice shiny smooth surface on aluminium castings. Well have a look at this. Flip it over the other side. All I used was clay, moisture and sand. That's all it was. So we're finally ready for the test. So we're going to a thousand psi. Yeah, it's getting hard to pump up that pressure. It's two thousand psi. Yep, that's right on two hundred bar, three hundred p, three thousand psi. That's three thousand five hundred psi. Three thousand Man, this is getting hard to press down. Oh! 
Well, that brought the test to a premature end. Have a look what happened. The end blew off the grease gun. Oh dear. So what we get to? 4,000 psi. Here we are, back to our regular scheduled programming. I've replaced the grease gun. This one's got a heavier hose. But the only problem with that heavier hose is every time I pump, it's going to make the casting and the gauge wobble around. So I'll have to try very hard not to do that. Yep, it's up to 5,000 now. Starting to get a bit nervous here. It's very high pressure. So what I might do is just cover this just in case it springs a leak and sprays oil all over me. Whoa! There it went. Didn't quite see that but it looked like about 5,500. Now we'll have a closer look at the carnage and you can see exactly what's happened. The casting itself is very strong but aluminium is a very soft metal. And you can see what's happened there. It's just pulled the threads out of the casting and the screws you can see they've got a bit of a distance away from the washer. And when that happens the only thing that can happen is the o-ring pops out and all the pressure is released. And you have a look at the other screw over there, same thing, the thread's pulled out. Alright, we'll have a closer look at the screw. And as you can see, it's just pulled out the threads. Just try and turn this a bit. Yeah, you can see it just pulled the thread out. Aluminium was just not strong enough to hold that thread. Now if I had to put a nut behind it, it probably would have gone to a higher pressure. With the last gauge, it would only go up to 3,000 psi. So this gauge will go up to nearly 9,000 psi, which is 600 bar. So what I've done, I've taken up close to 3,000. Now we'll keep pumping and we'll see what happens. So I've got about 4,000 psi, which is about 270 bar. So I've got it to 5,000 psi, which is 340 bar. So we've got it up to 6,000 psi, which is 420 bar. Still holding. Whoa, there it goes. About six and a half, I think it was. So here we go with the cast iron cylinder. I found the weak link in the chain and it turns out to be the end cover. That broke out. So that got up to 6,500 psi which is about 450 bar. 
that is an insane pressure. You are probably wondering why I left the silicon bronze cylinder till last. Well as you can see cast iron is brittle. It can be strong but it's still brittle. Silicon bronze is a very strong high tensile alloy. It will not crack like cast iron. So I've decided to call the test to a halt and it's just a test between cast iron and aluminium. Now with silicon bronze it is just such a tough material it's not worth making another cover say out of mild steel and going to even more insane pressures. I feel that I've gotten lucky and this is as far as I want to go. It's told me what I want to know. So we've got the aluminium cylinder. It was amazing when I took the cover off the side where it hadn't blown off with the thread stripped and every screw was not loose but it was only barely enough pressure to hold it down. It didn't take much pressure with the Allen key to loosen them off. So one side might, might have been just a fraction weaker than the other and that's why one side let go before the other. But if I had of the other side hadn't have gone, I would increase it maybe 100 or 200 psi, or maybe about 10 bar, 30, 15 bar. It would have let go on the other side as well. So it's given me a very good insight, and for you, exactly how strong aluminium is, and it's pretty well as strong as cast iron, which I thought it wouldn't be and the aluminium casting has not been heat treated. It is just how it's come out of the mould. The same with the silicon bronze and with the cast iron. It has not been heat treated in any way, so that's the strength I've got straight out of the mould.